Keeps going, scrolling, 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 going, going. Hey, there we go. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. When did this become Splinter Cell? Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Fall of Porcupine. So, oops, someone threw snowballs in my window. I hope it wasn't my old house plan. Back for, for revenge. <laughs> it is. He did come back. I mean, He's a plant. He can just grow out and, you know, you put him outside and maybe he'll just grow into a new plant. Anyway, oh my god, man. Alfeo, how in the world are you out here without a jacket? Do you need one? Hey, good morning. I've had better, let me tell you. I was just resting my eyes. Letting my soul relax for a while. That's not what I was asking. <laughs> I had a nice dream just starting up. About a nice, hot fondue. Then all of a sudden, Stampede! This huge crowd of people came storming by. No consideration for my beauty sleep. <laughs> they looked angry. Really? Someone threw snowballs in my window this morning. Maybe it was the same people. Why were they angry? How should I know? They were headed for the old town. Weird. I'll keep my eyes open. Good idea. Take care, buddy. Okay. I wonder if maybe it has to do with Ralph, He and he gathered a posse, uh, cause he was angry at us for letting Irma die, or causing it. Which is stupid because, first of all, the pipes bursted on accident, it's, mm, we got no control over that, other than someone probably just didn't, you know, pay too close attention. But it's a big hospital, what else can you do? And, but Ralph is just out for revenge on this hospital just because we let his wife die. Is everything okay? I'm not exactly sure. I was just shoveling snow in front of our store when I heard rather a commotion. I wanted to see what was going on and there was this crowd of people. They were walking towards the town square. I can still feel the adrenaline coursing through my veins. Alright, so town square. That's gotta be up here, right? Oop, there we go. Alright, I guess we'll, we'll have to wait and see and find out who it is. Hey, how's it going? Adele, are you alright? Dear Lord! What? I almost got trampled by a crowd of people. They were really fired up. I asked what they were up to, but nobody listened to me. It reminded me of the Great Riot of Sandalwood. Would you like to learn about that, my buddy historian? Uh, sure, I guess we got time. You should always make time for history. It always has something to teach us for the future. It all happened one hot summer in Sandalwood. Very different weather to what we're experiencing right now. <laughs> At that time, Sandalwood was also known as the Citrus City. A lot of the people there worked with citrus products, you see. Juice, candies, soaps. In time, Sandalwood became very wealthy. The huge variety of citrus cakes at the famous Lime Cream Bakery were especially popular. Eventually though, the owner of the bakery got greedy. From one day to the next, the prices of her cakes and pies went up to five times what they used to be. Oh damn, that's a real... <laughs> uh, what's a damn war for it? I'm sorry, I don't, I don't, I don't know marketing, so... <laughs> that's really high up there. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. At the same time, she started using lower grade fruit in her baked goods. Oh my god, it's the greed. People caught on and called for a boycott. Things got so out of hand, almost half the old town was burned to the ground. All through the local area, the air stink of citrus for weeks to come. That's why they call it the Citrus Summer. A beautiful name for a terrible incident. The owner of the pastry shop got away with it. However, strict requirements for citrus fruit products were established soon after. And before long, she left town and she was never seen again. There you have it, the Great Riot of Sandalwood. Fascinating. <laughs> I wonder if this is foreshadowing. Maybe this has to do with the, the hospital. Hey Guillermo, how's it going? Little early for a drink, don't you think? Oh, don't you do more than just drinks? <laughs> yeah, I better not. I just wanted to stop by. Things got pretty ugly yesterday. Yeah? All the same, I'm glad I could be there. For you and Irma. I hope the service went smoothly after I left. 
We went up to the Glow Milk Woods. I found a real special spot for Irma. It was alright. Some of the mourners kept on bringing up to the hospital though. I'm still trying to process the whole thing. Have you seen a crowd of people pass by here? Yeah, actually. Pretty noisy for this time of day. I think they were heading towards the hospital. It's damn Ralph and all those people, I'm sure. Really? That's strange. I hope it's not a sign of bad news to come. I'm on my way there anyway. Good luck, my friend. Alright, who else is here? I, I hear like, there's supposed to be like a crowd of people. People eating, but no one's here. Guillermo, are you like... Oh, wait. Oh, there's a second floor? Wait. I did not know this was here. But then again, I, I never even got a chance to walk in here. Hell, I didn't even know who that... Uh, that buffalo was in the wheelchair until I just finally, you know, got to meet him during the service. What the hell? Why well, wasn't able to get in here until just now? Until then, you know? <laughs> eh, oh well. It might have been a glitch. Same as when I was having trouble with my clothes changing. Oh my god, I hear them. Those don't sound like cheering. That sounds like an angry mob. <laughs> hey, St. Ursula. There's lots of people here. I thought maybe there'd be gifts? Chocolate? But actually, everyone's just angry. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it either, but I kind of don't have a choice. How much more money are you going to squeeze from us? What? Don't you work at the hospital too? I sure do. And it's been far too long. I can't do all of this anymore. I've been saving away for years. No private life, no downtime? I want to make my voice heard. And these people have valid points. Why don't you join us? We could really make a difference here. We want to see the numbers. Okay. I'm telling you, St. Ursula's Hospital has got to go. How many of you have suffered here? How many of you have emptied your pockets into their coffers? The fees go up every month. But the quality of the treatment gets worse and worse. The staff are overworked. And the building's falling apart to boot. Will we keep on accepting this? Will we keep on sacrificing our loved ones to this hospital? No. Absolutely not. What? What's this about? Ah, there's our specialist. What are your plans for today, con artist? Let me pass, Ralph. Go ahead. I'm sure you've got plenty of corrupt shenanigans to be dealing with. We'll just see how many more lives you take before someone stops you. That's right, get lost. Down with St. Ursula's. Down with St. Ursula's. Ah, Ralph. Although I do agree with him, the fees are fucking too high. <laughs> Ingrid, have you seen the people out there? Oh, sure. Bit of an overreaction if you ask me. Do you think we should call the police or something? Don't worry about it, kid. This isn't the first time we've had angry folks show up at our door. I'm sure the process has been cleared with the authorities. So right now, there isn't much we can do. Ralph's always sticking his nose in where it doesn't belong. But when he gets an idea in his head, he doesn't let it go again easily. So, you're not worried? There's even a nurse in the crowd. Nah, not really. Criticism comes with the territory, after all. No one co who comes here leaves feeling amazingly refreshed and rejuvenated. At best, they'll just feel normal again. And if they don't, well, that's when certain kinds of people get angry. As long as they don't actually charge inside the hospital, it's all good. Dr. Theobald's already on the case. By the way, he was asking after you this morning. Seems like every day he wants something from you now, huh? Guess he likes you. But you can go straight on up to your ward. That's where he is right now anyway. Okay, well, I wonder what he's got to say about now. We didn't get in trouble this time, right? <laughs> Maybe it has to do with Ralph. Okay. It doesn't look 
bright in here. It looks a little gloomy. It seems your whole fan club is here today, Finley. And not just that, Dr. Theobald's waiting for you too. You're a popular doctor today. Have you seen Dr. Theobald around? I certainly have. He's in our break room, which is why I'm keeping out of there right now. We've been clashing on a few matters lately. As such, I don't have much desire for small talk. Already wants to talk to me. Of course he does. Please keep it brief. We have work to do. I will do my best, but if he's got a lot to say, I can't do much about it. <laughs> I mean, he is our boss, right? And we gotta stay there. Alright, let's see. Where is he? Oh, there he is. I, I, I don't know why. I was half expecting him to just be laying down on the couch. <laughs> Dr. Theobald, have you heard about the people in front of the building? Of course. But first, I have a question for you. Did you go to Mrs. DeCama's funeral service? Yes, and I think it did help me. Thanks for the tip. I'm afraid I'm partly to blame for the protest, though. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, the funeral seemed quite normal at first. But then they started saying it was my fault Irma died. I didn't know what to do. You know, there's one thing you unfortunately need to be aware of working here. When you work at a hospital, problems become part of your daily routine. Generally speaking, someone comes to us with a problem. Sometimes the problem can be fixed. But sometimes, however unfortunately, it cannot. We don't have secret superpowers. All we can do is make people feel like they were before. That is our business, day in, day out. When we succeed, we are rarely rewarded with positive words or deeds. Yet if we fail, a negative response is never far away. That's the way it is, sadly. And our profession is far from unique in that regard. I'm sure you're familiar with the phenomenon yourself. We don't get a chance to provide a diagnosis until something's already not behaving as it should. So what can we do to get these people to calm down? Don't worry about it, please. I will not allow my staff to be attacked or harassed. I'll talk to the protesters to sort things out. And what can I do? Do your job. Help those who need help. Solve as many problems as possible. Even though not all of them will be solvable. Okay. I wish you the best of luck. Hmm. Well, he kind of opened my eyes up on like, certain things. I, I mean, I always thought like maybe once... The doctors leave the hospital. Not only doctors, nurses too. You, they just kind of like have to work on switching it off. But these are people that get have to be seen on the streets eventually. Even if it's a big town, you you never know when you may run into a, a patient out there. So I guess their work never really does leave them down, does it, huh? And it definitely must be worse for those that felt like they failed their patients, um, one way or another. I mean, like I said, not everyone's forgiving. Ralph is definitely one of those people that is definitely not forgiving. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I should speak too much on Ralph other than the fact that he just doesn't want to accept things the way they are and rather blame people instead of realize that it's just part of life, that that, that just happens, that they're human just as much as he is. He, You know, I'm pretty sure in his work, he's made mistakes, uh, you know. It is what it is. <laughs> I imagine you have questions? Always. I'm sure you want to know how I feel about all of this. Whether I'm worried about that little protest down there. Let's both do ourselves a favor and skip that part of the conversation. Please, get started with your assignments for today. We'll talk later. Okay, well. Are we gonna talk or are you just gonna... Stay, good job, continue the work. Have a nice day. <laughs> I kind of feel like she'd probably be saying that. Hey, we got to deal with the owl. All right, let's go ahead and work our way over. How you doing? I can't remember your damn name. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, what's all that racket out there? Just an angry mob of people dissatisfied with our work. Ha! <laughs> Who do they know? 
They don't have the first clue how difficult our work even is, do they? How are you doing today? You tell me. That's why you're here, isn't it? <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> well, I guess they trust us now. Now they're not trying to self-diagnose themselves. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, let's see. Pills, pills, pills. What pills do you need? All right, this looks like it's right. A plus, all right. <laughs> I still got it. Your liver readings are improving. Good. But I'm afraid you'll need to stay with us for a few more days. Darn. Well, it hasn't killed me yet. That's why you still got the pleasure of treating me. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. Don't let it go to your head. I know what the situation is in this hospital. Even I need to put up with an apprentice doctor. I've not forgotten my duty to teach the next generation. So go ahead. Learn something. Aw. He's coming around. He's liking us. Yay. <laughs> oh, wait. Is it a he or a she? I can't remember. I think it was a she. What? When did you become a patient? So we meet again. Theodora, to what do I owe the pleasure? It's my lungs. The weather's doing a number on me right now. I need regular checkups. I have an artificial heart valve. Oh, okay. Then there's this severe hypoxia. You're saying your blood isn't being supplied with enough oxygen? Exactly. I get by, but I'd feel better if someone gave me a once-over. Sure, allow me. Oh, bolly. Let's see. Can I do this? Damn it. I hate this game. Ah, nuggets. <laughs> I don't like that little mini game. I suck at it. <laughs> Your lungs are fine. Your heart too. I didn't know you could hear a heart valve. <laughs> yeah. Not a bad party trick, huh? Ingrid downstairs can write you a prescription for your medication. Great. That's what I call fast service. By the way, things are a little crazy around here right now. Be careful when you head out the door. I noticed, yeah. Alrighty, well you have a good day. Even though I really sucked at it. But what can you do? <laughs> I don't have the smartest fingers. I like, you know, I got really dumb fingers. They don't respond to me as well. Makes me wonder how I'm maybe able to play video games, right? <laughs> but then again, I've been a console player for like the longest time. So I'm not really well acclimated to my PC. I mean, I've been playing on a PC for, you know, for years. Hell, I've even written like... You know, my schoolwork on this computer and all that, but still, <laughs> I just can't seem to get the hang of writing, writing down in the proper way. I got my hands just floating around. I don't even lay my fingers down like they teach you, and computer and you know computer labs um, to be more proficient. But you know, I, my work gets done. I'm still somewhat pretty quick. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Doctor. Guess what? My tummy ache's gone. And my mom's coming to pick me up today. Aw, that's cool. Great. I'm really glad to hear that. Shall we give you one last checkup before you go home then? I don't have great patients like you here very often, so I need to make the most of it. <laughs> They're adorable. I love it. Alright, let's see. Where do we need to stab this child? That looks like a good spot, but is there another one? Another spot we can get. Ooh, that's a big one. Yeah, let's go with that one. There we go. Not straight down up in the middle, but still pretty close. <laughs> a plus. All right. Well, you've got just about the healthiest tummy I've seen all week. <laughs> My colleague gave your mom a letter for your pediatrician earlier. Now, you need to be careful what you eat in future, okay? Can you promise me you'll do that? Yes. Dr. Gerdo said the same thing. 
that I should listen to you. And you know what? What? She says you're a good doctor. Aww. Really? Yes, because you made my tummy ache go away. And she says you made her tummy ache go away too. But you know what else? No, what? Dr. Gerda's a good doctor too. Because she made my homesickness go away every night. You're right there, Emma. <laughs> my colleague will take you down to see your mom in a minute, okay? Take care, Emma. Bye. Aww. I'm gonna miss Emma. <laughs> She's so adorable. <laughs> and I find out that Gerda likes us. Okay. Alright, Kukowski, we are done for the day. I have a lot on my mind right now. Let me take a quick look at your results. It's gonna be a B, isn't it? Yep. Uh, I haven't been able to get an A in a while. I understand all too well that you're under a lot of pressure right now. Nevertheless, your performance is solid. There's hope for you yet. I have some organizational tasks to deal with now. Have a nice evening. Take care of yourself. Do you think the protesters are still outside? I expect that the Theobald's dealing with that. Don't worry so much, Finley. These kinds of things can weigh you down. But it'll all blow over in a few days. You've got the day off tomorrow. Sleep in late. Time of time off is precious. Enjoy it. Okay, well, off we go. Oh. <laughs> I'm not taking the stairs, I'm taking the elevator. I'm not like Carl. I trust the elevator. Wait, did it get dark in here? It looks dark. Better not go out there, kid. What? Why? The protest's still going strong. I've called the police already. But they say there's nothing they can do. Yeah, right. Your colleague thought better of it just now, too. I think she had tears in her eyes. Mia? I wanted to say something, but she turned back inside and ran right past by me. You mean Mia? Where did you go? Don't know. Back upstairs, I think. And Dr. Theobald? Wasn't he meant to talk to the protesters? I don't know anything about that either. I haven't seen him at any rate. He probably got held up by his luxury vending machine again. I'm gonna go check on him. You do what you need to do, kid. We can't change what's going on out there right now anyway. Make yourself a coffee and wait for it all to be blow over. That's what I say. Okay, well... Where would Mia be? We should be in her office? Let's see if the elevator will take us exactly where we need to go. I feel like it should. Okay, yeah. So we are going to Theobald's uh, office then. Dr. Theobald? Are you there? What? He's not here. Dr. Theobald? Where did he go? Looks like he was here not long ago. Maybe there was an emergency? Hey, maybe he jumped out the window? Nope. Okay, well... Damn, what? <laughs> maybe he's up on the third floor. Oh. Is there something here? The shelf looks the same as always. Everything's still where it was this morning. It's like the D Dr. Theobald's just vanished into thin air. Maybe he fell through a rift in time and space. He could be living in another dimension right now. A world where pizza can cure cancer. Ooh, that'd be cool. <laughs> Just have a slice of pizza and cure all your cancer. Oh, it's a Lynx. So Finley, we meet again. Does the boss have time right now? I need to talk to him. Dr. Theobald's not here. His office is empty. What? Strange. I mean, Theobald usually leaves the door to his office open, but only when he's actually in it. Have you seen him around late today? Nope. That's why I'm here. The people in the ward can't sleep with all that commotion outside. I was going to ask Dr. Theobald for help. Last resort before I go out there and kick some butt myself. <laughs> I spoke to him this morning. He assured me he was going to smooth the situation over. Well... Guess that didn't happen, huh? Yeah, that's strange though. Well, I mean, what are we supposed to do now? I just bumped into Mia, too. She's pretty upset. Poor thing. Mia? What was wrong with her? No idea. 
I called after her, but she ignored me. She just said that Mr. Arndus is back. Arndus? Mr. Arndus? Yeah. <laughs> you remember that old geezer, right? Why is he back? Always with the questions. Grandpa was sent to the ba best rehab money can buy at our expense. Then he's not back here two minutes before he goes and poisons himself. Oh, wow. Seriously? <laughs> Probably thought this wood oil was a bottle of gin. Is he... Of course not. What is it with you and the drama? Which way did she run? Upstairs. Arnest is on the fourth floor. If I had to guess, I'd say she's up there. I'll go take a look. Alright. Guess I'll hunt down the boss. Thank you, Sandra. No problem. Wait, is this the first time we actually learned her name? I don't think I recall her name being Sandra. But then again, if we did learn it once, I probably would have forgotten. <laughs> I'm not great with names. It's the mule! Have you seen Mia? Yes, she just scared past by me. She was on her way to see a patient. Oh, nice. A pelican. Have you lost something? No? Well, yeah, maybe. Weird answer. Well, if you find something, I'll keep hold of it. Once you've decided if you lost something, you can ask again. Okay. Hello, young grasshopper. Dr. Gotera, is there a Mr. Arndus here in this ward? My duty would normally prohibit me from simply divulging such information. But I can feel the tension in the air. It surrounds us. It permeates us. It holds the universe together. Yes, Mr. Willie Arndus is a guest on this ward. He was just setting out for a walk down the hall. One of my own favorite cure-alls, as it happens. Oh crap, he's gonna be... He's gonna end up on the fifth floor again. <laughs> I have a feeling he's gonna end up there. Oh no, there he is. Mr. Arndus, can you listen to me for a moment, please? Buncombe! I don't have to put up with this. I already told you I didn't, didn't steal any blueberry pudding. And why didn't I get a pickle with my dinner today? Mr. Arndus, please. I need your help. Why does everyone keep asking for my help? I just want to be left alone, damn it. Who are all these people out there anyway? Clear off, you're not getting my money. <laughs> Mr. Arndus. Mia. Finley. There you are. W what's going on here? I... I wanted to do something. I have to do something. What happened? Why are you talking to Mr. Arndis? I was just on my way home. Those people, they're so angry. They called me names and threw things at me. I can't go on like this anymore. I'm here to help people, aren't I? Why are they getting on my back for that? I know, Mia. I know. Last time Mr. Arndis was here, he was barely responsive. I was hoping to ask him about the night of your, of your accident. Maybe he knows something. That's... Not a bad idea. What does that have to do with right now, though? Mr. Artis, can I ask you something? What is it now? You! Oh, does he remember us now? I mean, for the moment? Dementia is a fickle thing. Don't I know you, sunny boy? Yes, uh, we've met before. You were at this hospital a little while ago, last fall. You had an accident. Do you remember? I, um... Yes. I know your voice. What happened exactly? Tell me. We were looking for you. We think the broken elevator took us both to a disused ward. I found you there. You were injured. Oh, that was you? I was just trying to get back to my room. I don't know how I ended up in that place. What do you remember about it? Not much. I'm not as young as I was. I was looking for my room. The hallway was completely dark, but someone had left a desk lamp on. There was a bed covered in folders and paperwork. And then? And then I heard your voice. Not the most pleasant way to wake up. <laughs> and that's not even mentioning the headache. Is that all you can remember? No, after that I was back in the blasted hospital. My time at that rehab place was worth it though. <laughs> I've not had a beet lasagna that delicious since I was a kid. 
Ugh, beat lasagna. Ugh. <laughs> uh, to each their own. Okay, thank you, Mr. Artis. You've been a great help. What does it mean? A lot. He remembered a desk, Mia. That bed I saw on the fifth floor with the documents on it? Carl said there was nothing there. But Mr. Artis saw it too. Exactly. So what now? We need to let Carl know. Maybe he'll know what to do with this information. Oh, <laughs> pop up the phone now, huh? Hey, Carl, what are you up to? Wait, do you have a hidden camera in my apartment? I was just about to call you. <laughs> no, things are starting to get out of hand here. Me and I want to do something about it. What a coincidence. I was thinking exactly the same thing. Come on over. I've already got an idea. Wait, have you ever been to my place before? No. I live on the high street next to the bakery. Got it. We're on our way. Okay, let's go. Where's the high street? I don't remember where the high street is. Is that, like, close to the market? No. Let's see what else he has to say. Greetings, dear sparks of the soul. Dr. Katera, are you alright? It is what it is. It is as it should be. Have you seen Dr. Theobald by any chance? We're starting to get worried. That is... Definitely unusual. No, I haven't felt his aura today. Should I see him? I will tell him of your feelings. Thank you. Is everything okay with you two? More or less. But I'm afraid we're in a bit of a rush. Well, don't let me keep you. I'll try to get Mr. Anders back to bed. Oh, we shouldn't be going out that way. <laughs> let's let's head out through the back door. Um, you know what? I don't think I've had to go see the mole in a while yet. Is there an option for me to talk with them? Is that a baseball bat? I mean, not a baseball bat. It's a ball. Oh, man. I can't even go out that way either. Shoot. I guess we're going to have to go out through the front. Uh, okay. I don't know about y'all, but I have this inkling suspicion that maybe Ralph is the one that's causing all the issues here in the in the hospital. Yeah, I mean, he's got a vendetta against us. What's to keep him from actually coming in and... But no, someone should have seen him coming in, right? Unless he's coming in through a well, we don't know. It's gonna be a long night. Good job, I've just put on a fresh pot of coffee. Mia, you're not gonna change? All right, your choice. Okay, we're gonna go this way. <laughs> Try to keep from uh, fighting with Ralph, because there's really no point. He, they're not gonna listen. Might as well just let themselves get tired out and then talk to them. The place? Oh, it is. How about that? Hello? Hey, Carl, it's us. What's the password? Password? You didn't give us a password. Hmm, true. I guess that one's on me. Can you let us in, please? It's pretty cold out here. <laughs> now without the password. Hold on, I just need a minute to think of one. Really? <laughs> Come on, man, we're here. Come on. Okay, alright, I've got one. The password is... Mango. Keep it to yourselves and... Don't pass it on. Great. Will you let us in now? Not until you give me the password. Mango. Ah, it's you guys. Very good. Very good. Well, what are you standing around out there for? Come on in. It's way too cold outside. <laughs> you should have just let it in and then tell us the password. Duh. And then Philly came along. Mr. Arndis hasn't exactly confirmed that. But he said he remembers stacks of folders in the bright light. Hmm. What do you think about Carl? I think that all fits together. I used my involuntary vacation to do some thinking. I never liked this whole situation right from the start. First though, I need to apologize to you, Finley. I was never quite sure if you'd been imagining things or not when you had your accident. But I can see now that you were onto something. So, what are our conclusions? That we need to go deeper. Deeper? 
You know, I'm the longest serving member of staff at St. Initials after Ingrid. I do the rotas, manage our inventory, and put our orders together. What are you getting at? We need to go to the hospital's document archive. That could be where we find the answers to what's going on here. You mean the big storeroom in the basement? Surely we can't just walk in there. No, the storeroom's always locked. Even I don't have access to it. But I have an idea how we can get in there. It'll require perfect teamwork, though. This is a delicate matter like an ornate glass figurine. It's a heist! We're pulling a heist at the hospital! <laughs> awesome. We need to consider our every move carefully, like chess grandmasters. Wow, you really put some thought into this. Of course I have. <laughs> so, listen carefully. Old Glendower has all the keys of the building in his office, including the key for the archive. That's the one we need to get. And how are we going to do that? Sometimes Gregor stays at the hospital late into the night. Seems like he's got some kind of project he works on in his office after hours. I don't know what it is, but he sure puts a lot of time into it. And over the course of my many night shifts, I've noticed something. At exactly 1 a.m. every night, he leaves his office and sets off to see Ingrid. Okay. What for? <laughs> yes, that's it. Slowly, he sets out on his trusted path. Step by step. Okay, can we get there already? <laughs> foot by foot. Okay, we get it. Just... <laughs> Can't we just skip all this? His mind never strained from his goal. Until he finally reaches Ingrid's desk. The two always spend a while chatting. Then Gregor grabs a coffee and heads back to his office. And you know what? When he goes on this little walk, he never locks his office. That gives us the perfect window to get in there. Finley, you wait until Gregor leaves his office. We pan over to the right and just keep panning, keep panning, keep panning, keep going. We're almost there. Keep scrolling, 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 going, going. Hey, there we go. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. When did this become Splinter Cell? <laughs> That's when you go in to look for the archive key. Sounds good. But he must have lots of keys. It'll take a, me a while to find the right one. No problem. That's where me and I come in. Word on the street says you're a talented actress, Mia. What? Me? Um... Oh, God, we keep panning back. Alright, folks, just keep scrolling through, scrolling through. There we go. Oh, my God, seriously? <laughs> Carl! Carl! What the hell? Why do you look good in that? <laughs> Good evening, my dearies. What's with the disguise? I'm on leave right now, right? It's best if I stay incognito while I'm at the hospital for now. I don't want any more trouble. Okay. Good. Now, where was I? <coughs> Please pay no attention to me. I'm just an old, fragile little granny. Just here to visit her little son. I suppose I better head up to this room. <laughs> Oops. Uh-oh. Carl? <laughs> oh my! My hip! Such pain! Ow! <laughs> Don't worry, I'm coming. What the hell? What's what? What are we wearing? Fear not, I am a competent junior doctor. I'm here to help this poor old lady. It looks like she took a bad fall with no outside interference whatsoever. What's this now? If you get a costume, I want one too. After all, I'm playing the courageous doctor in shining armor. Alright, I guess. As I was saying, I rushed here right now to help this injured person. This looks bad. You there with a broom. What, me? 
You look strong. I implore you, help me with this old lady. What's with the amateur dramatics? No drama here, sir. This is serious. I need to make sure that this person has not sustained any more severe injuries. <sighs> hmm. All right. And we pan over to the right. And then, boom! The key is ours! <laughs> the perfect plan. Now there's just one thing left to do. Head down to the basement and enter the document archive. Oh, wait, are we actually doing this in real time? I thought we were just role-playing. Just bringing it out. <laughs> okay, well, alright, that saves me the trouble of actually having to do it. This is an interesting way. To go through all this trouble. All right, I think the art comes are this way. I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I think I've only been down here like once. Oh, hey guys! Good job, team. It's heist time. <laughs> oh, we even got the spotlight and the camera. Before we go in there, what exactly are we looking for? I'm not quite sure yet, but we know when we see it. Wait a second. The door was already open. What? That can't be right. That door is always locked. Maybe so, but it wasn't today. Okay, so I guess it was just an imagination? Vision kind of thing we were looking through? Finley's eyes? I don't know. <laughs> is that supposed to be Dr. Krakowski on the left? With devil horns? Maybe... Maybe you're right, Carl. Let's check it out. Someone was in here recently. How do you know that? The layer of dust isn't as thick as usual. I haven't been here in ages, but something just feels different. Like someone's disturbed the energy of the room. Since when are you the mystical type? Hey, back off. I can sense these things. You better take a look around. Maybe we'll find something unusual. All right, uh, and movies, archives like these are full of secrets and treasures. In real life, I guess they're full of boredom, too. <laughs> yep. All right. Oh. Medical records, doctor's letters, studies, lab results. Some of these documents are older than my parents. There must be loads of thrilling stories stashed away down here. Oh, dead end there. Well, I guess we need to start climbing. Maybe I'll be able to jump on some boxes. Hey, hey, there we go. On a box I can jump on. Look up here. Billy, get down from there. You'll break your neck. I'm a bird. He'll just float down. Mia's right. We all know those boxes are out of to get you. How did you get it up there anyway? It doesn't matter. Someone's taking some folders off the shelves. You can still see a print in the dust. It's pretty obvious something's missing. What? Let me see. Yes. It's definitely not normal. I know it doesn't look like it, but there's actually a system in this archive. And something's clearly missing here. These empty space should be filled with at least seven years worth of receipts and bills. You're right, Carl. Why do you sound so surprised? I thought you'd be used to that by now. Do you think this means anything? I think it does. What's really interesting is that all these missing files should be long to the same time period. They'll all be documents that would potentially be needed for communication with the health insurance companies. Those kinds of documents don't just disappear. But they might have been moved to another location before they're still needed. Like an old hospital bed on the fifth floor, for instance. That's gotta be it. There must be someone who knows about this. Dr. Theobald, maybe? I don't think so. He hasn't been seen in a while. Should we go to the police? Hmm. Uh-oh, someone's in here. There's someone's outside. We need to get out of here quickly. Agreed. 
I and mean, we're just gonna walk right by them. <laughs> I don't think there's anywhere to hide outside. And there's no exit that way. Oh, wait. Hey, I can actually jump up. Okay, I'm in my hiding spot. <laughs> okay, nothing's happening. So does that mean I, I did that for nothing? Oh, it's the Lynx. What are you doing down here? Carl, is that you? Sandra, we just stumbled onto something big. Have you seen Dr. Theobald? We need to speak to him urgently. The boss? I haven't seen a whiff of him. I need to see Halil and pick up some blood results. It's not like there's anyone here who's actually meant to be working on our ward. But you better settle in anyway. That crowd outside is way bigger now. I wouldn't be trying to head home right now if I were you. Not that I can think about clocking off too much to do. The words are all pretty much full. So come on, make sure so make yourselves useful. Sandra's right. Finley, we should lend a hand on the ward. What about the missing documents? I'm sure that can wait. We need to give Gregor his key back, then help out upstairs. You're right. Okay. Wait, does that mean Carl has to work too? <laughs> uh, sure. Come on, Carl. <laughs> it looked like he was shaking in his boots. Uh, I could use a little help here. That was Ingrid. Let's have a look. Oh, God, they got in. Down with St. Ursula's. Here comes another of those bunglers. Ralph, you crackpot. Just go home, okay? You can't just come in here like this. It's not allowed. Please, just let us do our job. The noise you're making is bad enough. But more importantly than that, you're blocking the main entrance. That means you're stopping us from admitting any more patients. Please just leave. Bah! That's just a load of stupid excuses. Who's going to stop us? You? Patrick here has a terrible ailment. Exactly. Ow! The pain! That's enough! Not only did you cripple him for the rest of his life when he injured his arm years ago, that nasty little run attacked us both just the other week. Patrick's still recovering to this day. And that's not even mentioning the psychological trauma we both suffered. And what, getting your ass whooped? You needed it. Don't be ridiculous. Ow, my arm. See, we have every reason to be here and every right too. We're not leaving until we get some answers. Get the chief physician out here now. But hasn't Dr. Theobald come to speak to you at all already? He assured me that. Of course he hasn't. As if he would get his fat ass out of that comfy chair. Will you all just listen for one minute? If he's not gonna come down here, we'll just we'll just have to take this to him. That's right. And you know what else? Let me through, damn it! Help, quickly! Wait, what? What's going on? What happened to him? And weren't you in the protest too? Rennie, what's up? This person. They were just standing next to me in the crowd. Then all of a sudden they fainted. I just managed to stop them from hitting the ground. They don't look good. We should take them to the ward. Typical. Always the same. The next pair soul for you to bleed dry. Finley, lend a hand here. But what about Dr. Theobald? I'll try and find out where he is. And I'll try to find out more about the missing documents too. We'll talk later. All right. Let me through you scumbags. The patient's in very poor condition. I'm glad you brought him to us. Do you know what's wrong with him? I'll take care of this. Please just give me some time. Mia, Finley. Please look after the ward. There's a lot to do, as ever. And this? Is it helping? Sure, we'll take care of it. I want to help too. Good. Ask around the other wards. See if anyone else can help out. Consider it done. Alright, let's see. What do we have here? Two new patients. 
don't you need any help here? What I need most of all is time. The best way for you to help me is to take care of the ward on your own. Forgive me if I can't monitor your work as closely as usual. You and me have been here a while. Prove to me that I can trust you with our ward. Okay, we can definitely do that. Wait, is there more you can say? Focus, Finley. I know you want to make sure everyone's as comfortable as possible. But keep it brief today, okay? I'll let you know as soon as I know more. Okay, well, we could definitely do that. Okay, looks like everyone's on the left side of the ward, so... We'll just work our way down. Starting with this one. Although, I, are you a bear? No, you're, you're a bear. Who's the other one? A cat? Yeah, are you supposed to be a cat? Greetings. And the same to you. You're struggling with inflammation after an abdominal injury, right? Let's take a look then. Uh, oh, my god, we gotta do this again? Why is it doing this now? That's new. That's never happened before. Okay, I got a B. That's that's fine. <laughs> this is textbook inflammation, but I can see you've had all the important vaccines. We need to cool the wound properly, and you'll need antibiotics to treat the infection. Got it. For now, I'll just keep as still as possible. Good idea, and get well soon. Okay, one patient down. On to the next one. Come on, Finley. Run. Jog a little. Come on. I see you have a gastro... Oh, how do you pronounce that? Gastrointestinal infection. That's true. And you had a colonoscopy last night? Correct. There are probably better ways to spend your evenings, right? You're not wrong there. Alright, let me take a look. Are you... Oh, this one? Come on. Alright. Okay. Well, I didn't do too well that time around. But we got the job done. No serious abnormalities were found during your colonoscopy. It should not indicate a flu-like infection. That's good because it's treatable, and it should, shouldn't trouble you for too long. But I will need to get your electrical light and water levels back up. And you need to make sure you drink plenty of fluids, preferably tea. Okay. Okay, and now to our last patient. Hey, a doctor? Heard you like me. <laughs> That's great to hear. Something... Something's not right here, is it? Honestly, I'm not sure. It sure feels that way. The protest's still going on downstairs. It's got bigger, even. Yes, I noticed. Oh, we had someone collapse on us, too. One of the staff? No. A protester just keeled over her out of nowhere. Dr. Kakowski's diagnosing him now. But we don't know what's wrong with him yet. Hmm. You know, I've worked in the healthcare sector for decades. There have always been scandals, arguments, criticism. Some time ago, a large number of hospitals came to a decision that would end up having huge ramifications. Healthcare was improving. People were healing and recovering faster. In a very short time, the average length of a patient's hospital visit was halved. Accordingly, the hospitals decided to half their numbers for, of nursing staff, but the workload remained the same. So then came the overhauls, the saving strategies, that kind of thing. We're still seeing the effects of that decision today. I also see the shortcomings here at St. Ursula's too. What I'm trying to say is, I know what you're going through. 
I'd like to take a look at your readings, if that's okay. Of course. Whew, barely made it. <laughs> well, we got that A. I'm almost afraid to tell you this. What is it? Is it all for me? Is it all over for me? N no, quite the opposite. Your readings have improved significantly. Hmm. I wasn't expecting that, I must admit. But that's all part of the profession, too. Funny how things turn around sometimes. You should rest a little more. I think you'll be able to go back home soon. Your wish is my command. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. If I can help in any way, just say, I'd be glad to. That's really nice of you. But you're a patient here. The only thing you need to work on is getting healthy again. If you insist. <laughs> Finley, can you give me a hand, please? Uh, what's going on now? Is there another protest that it collapsed? I just finished my assignments. That's music to my ears. Can I take a look? While we're looking after the ward on our own, we should compare results to keep each other on track. A B. Okay. <laughs> Not so bad. Oh, wow. That's pretty good, Finley. I don't think I could perform as well as you under stress. I've got to say, I'm a little overwhelmed right now. All our beds are occupied. I can't keep up. We'll manage it. I need to head up to the fourth floor for a few minutes. They're having trouble there, too. Everyone's pitching in where they can right now. Can you take on a few more people? Sure. I'll hold the fort. Thanks. I'll be right back. Well, damn. We got three more patients to go through. But you know what? I'm going to need to end the episode right here. <laughs> We've already done six patients today. What's another three more? Let's go ahead... <laughs> <laughs> now let's just go ahead and end right here I've already been at this for a good while I'm getting hungry, I'm recording this early early in the morning and I just haven't eaten today I just decided to get up brush my teeth and start recording <laughs> but anyway I, go, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you did hit that like button and if you really enjoyed it by all by all means hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one okay take care you guys or I'll see you in the hospital <laughs>